Hello and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Live Healthy West Virginia podcast. I'm your host, Mary Ravazio Menard. If this all looks a little familiar to you, it's because Live Healthy West Virginia is a rebranding of the WVU Medicine series formerly known as Tuesday Talks. Now, it's no secret that West Virginia leads the nation in some pretty unhealthy categories, but it doesn't have to be that way. And that's what this podcast is all about. Live Healthy West Virginia is brought to you by WVU Medicine, whose mission is to improve the health of West Virginians. So we'll talk about the latest health information with an expert physician from WVU Medicine to help you live a better, healthier life. And this isn't just for residents of the Mountain State. Live Healthy West Virginia wants to help everyone live healthy in West Virginia and beyond. So today our topic is about a different kind of joint replacement surgery. You've probably heard of total knee or hip replacement surgery, but did you know that total ankle replacement surgery is an option for some patients? What is it? How does it work? Who's a good candidate? We'll answer those questions and more with Dr. Naji Mahdi, WVU Medicine foot and ankle surgeon. Dr. Mahdi, welcome to the first episode of Live Healthy West Virginia. Hi, Mary. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you here. So let's get started with uh, the basics. What exactly is total ankle replacement surgery? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, total ankle replacement is basically going into the ankle joint with a front incision, um, then remove the arthritis or the arthritic part of the ankle. Mm -hmm. The ankle is formed of a tibia and a talus. So we remove the arthritis from these two sides of the joint and then we put in metal on the tibia, metal on the talus, and a plastic in between to mimic kind of the normal anatomical uh, joint. So that's what we call a total ankle replacement or total ankle arthroplasty. Okay, so um, is this a relatively new procedure? Because I, I, I haven't heard a lot about it. You know, we always hear, hear about hip and knee replacement, but total ankle replacement, is that kind of new? So that's a good point, yeah. And you're right, because uh, knee arthritis is five times more common than ankle arthritis. Um, so that's why we hear less about ankle replacement. Mm, makes and that's, sense. Yep, and that's mm. related more to the nature of the disease or what's causing an ankle arthritis versus what's causing a knee arthritis. So these two are a little bit different and we can talk more about that. Now, the procedure itself is not really new. Like people have tried to replace ankles since the 70s and 80s. Oh, okay. But those first generation of ankle replacement did not really do well. Mm. Now we live through what's called the fourth generation of ankle replacement. Wow. Um, and that's a better design, more anatomical design. Um, and the results are pretty good um, in mimicking kind of the anatomy of the ankle uh, joint. Um, um, so it became famous again, or people gained interest again in ankle replacement once we had this fourth generation where the results were looking promising. So people start doing it again and people are hearing about ankle replacement again now. So does this fourth generation have to do, because I think this is really cool, that you use um, 3D printing uh, as part of the process. Is that what makes this newer, uh, a newer procedure? Right, so there is, there is room for 3D printing, no doubt, in ankle replacement. Um, fourth generation per se is not really um, based on the 3D printing. Um, fourth generation is mainly that the design of the ankle joint has changed, the ankle replacement actually. Oh, okay. So the first and second generations, the design were not really metal on metal and a plastic in between, or other technical parts needed to be done with those generations um, to do the surgery, to technically perform the surgery. There was a mismatch between the tibia and the talus as, as metals. Um, mm. All of that has changed and now, um, the tibia and the talus are a good match. Um, the way we do the replacement has changed um, and that's what made this as fourth generation. Now, 3D printing has, 
has a lot of room into anchor replacement and it's even newer technology. And we are using that um, during the case for like 3D printing the cutting guides instead of using a standard um, cutting guides for everyone, the same instruments, the same tools. Now we can, based on a CT scan, do a, a custom made wow. patient specific instrumentation for every ankle and then use those during the surgery. That's really cool. It's and, pretty cool. And I'm, I'm sure that helps in just the, be the overall success of the procedure. Right. It's, it's pretty nice because you have, um, I would say, good, maybe even better planning because now you know mm -hmm. the sizes that you're going to use. Mm -hmm. um, you have um, the CT scan in a 3D manner. You can go over the details of the procedure. And that's kind of where all the joint replacement is heading um, in terms of technical um, or technicalities um, during the procedure. Okay. Um, so you mentioned earlier that ankle arthritis is one of the reasons for the surgery. What other conditions does total ankle replacement surgery treat? Right. Um, so it's mainly a surgery for end stage or bone on bone um, ankle arthritis. Um, now, this, this is to treat an ankle arthritis that has failed conservative treatment, right? So a patient has an ankle arthritis, um, end stage or not end stage, we always kind of start with more conservative treatment. Like Such as what are those? Bracing, um, over-the-counter bracing, custom-made bracing, um, anti-inflammatories, medications, um, injections into the ankle joints, um, lifestyle modifications, weight mm -hmm. loss. If all of that is not really helping um, to alleviate the pain, then we look into surgical options. Okay. okay. Those would depend on how severe is the ankle arthritis. If it's end stage, bone on bone, then we have two options. Either ankle fusion, which means we lock the joint um, and um, we lose the motion at that joint. It takes care of the pain, but the price we pay is that we're losing the motion. And that has been a standard of care for so long because anchor replacement wasn't doing great. Now we have the anchor replacement and that uh, preserves motion and takes care of the pain. Um, and that's the other option for end stage ankle arthritis. So is ankle replacement becoming a more viable option compared to ankle fusion? Right. Um, so it's basically a discussion with the patient, but um, ankle fusion is the joint gets locked. Like we fuse yeah. that joint, we lose motion. Uh, people do well initially, but then over time, 10, 15, maybe 20 years, they start getting arthritis in other foot joints because mm -hmm. these joints are working more than usual to compensate for the uh, loss of the ankle joint yeah. that was fused that will lead to further surgeries on the foot itself. With anchor replacement, we preserve that motion, takes care of the pain, so the hope is uh, the patient will do better and then there will be less load on these foot joints so mm -hmm. to avoid arthritis in the long run. So, so how long do these um, ankle replacements usually last? Right, so um, that's a good question because now this is the fourth generation, which yeah. means it's mm -hmm. newer uh, generation. Um, we definitely have uh, great results with the short and midterm, and we do have that. Um, now, the long-term results are not there yet because this is a fourth generation. This is more newer generation. Right, it right. should be out in the next few years. Um, we have meta-analysis and reviews that showed that above 90% of success rate at the midterm getting closer to a long term but we don't have that specific number yet when like 15 years down the line how's those ankles are doing we know that that's way better now than what it used to be in the yeah. 70 percent survivorship now we're getting closer to the knee and hips numbers but we don't have that number yet so that's that's still a few years off knowing, that's few years knowing off. that okay um who's a good candidate for total ankle replacement i imagine this isn't for everybody Right. So um, any patient with end stage ankle arthritis, which means bone on bone arthritis, um, most of those patients are usually good candidates for an ankle replacement. Mm -hmm. Now, if a patient has um, 
maybe I'll take this into who is not a good candidate as well. Yeah, who's not. Right. If the patient has, um, let's say, uncontrolled diabetes mm -hmm. or um, really bad peripheral neuropathy um, or current or previous infection in the ankle mm -hmm. um, or a heavy smoker um, or because we can also talk about the cause of the ankle arthritis. So if the patient has um, compromised skin or soft tissue around the ankle joint, those to be taken case by case. And the patient has to be evaluated to decide if they're better off with an ankle replacement or maybe an ankle fusion or different type of procedure based on all these conditions. What about obesity? Does that play a role in whether or not you qualify? Right. Um, so we have studies that showed BMI um, doesn't really play a major role in the ankle replacement. Um, but those studies are not large enough in terms of the samples. We have that information from knee replacement where yeah. BMI is really important. Um, and that could relate to the ankle replacement as well. We don't have an objective evidence on that yet, but definitely it helps um, to have L lower BMI um, to treat arthritis to start with as conservative treatment sure, sure. and um, to rehab from the ankle replacement or after surgery to make it easier on the patient. Now I know with um, knee replacement uh, and hip replacement, they recommend prehab. Mm -hmm. Is prehab recommended for ankle replacement? Not as much, basically. No? Yeah, um, so patient has to be um, prepared for an ankle replacement. We look into the ankle and the foot um, clinically and on exam, range of motion and all of that. Um, and it's important or what makes it more complicated in the ankle is that the foot is underneath the ankle. So it's not enough to align the ankle itself. Uh -huh. We have to realign the foot if need be as well. Um, this is the sort of preparation before surgery after surgery, the rehab doesn't play a big role. Um, I would send some of my patients to rehab to basically um, help them improve their gait, learn how to walk with the new ankle and stuff like that. Uh, okay. But most of my patients have done well in, in doing the range of motion exercises at home. And if need be, I'll have them work with a physical therapist. Okay. So what kind of imaging or testing is needed mm -hmm. before total ankle replacement surgery? Right. So to start with is the clinical exam. We have to look at the alignment. Mm -hmm. The ankle arthritis comes frequently with a deformity. So it's not only bone on bone arthritis. The ankle is tilted one way or another, what we call varus or valgus. So either to the inside or outside. That's why people would walk on the side of their foot once they have ankle arthritis because of that deformity. So we want to understand that better by doing radiographs or x-rays to start with. And then routinely we get a CT scan to look at the extent of the arthritis, uh, whether there is cystic changes, and to make sure that the ankle is, is good for an ankle replacement. Um, so CT scans, x-rays um, are typical uh, preoperative imaging that we get before surgery. Now, at WV Medicine, we do uh, uh, CT scans where you can actually, that are weight-bearing. Mm -hmm. Explain why that's important and why is that a big deal to right. be able to have weight-bearing CT scans? Right. Super helpful. So at the POC clinic at Rubin Memorial, we do have in the foot and ankle clinic a weight-bearing CT scan. Um, it has a lot of benefits. Um, number one, as I talked, ankle arthritis comes with a deformity. Now that deformity cannot be fully appreciated if the patient is not weight bearing because without the weight on the ankle, you don't see um, how severe is the deformity. So if we get a CT scan that's um, non-weight bearing, regular one, there could be some questions whether this is all the deformity that's there or there is more to it. So weight bearing is basically the patient would step into the CT scan and stand there and then we will shoot that CT scan. Um, so we will see the deformity better than um, non-weight bearing CT scans. Number two, we get imaging for both ankles at the same time. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So mm -hmm. if we're looking into a 3D printing option, because um, some patients, they do have 
bone loss or um, erythrovision surgery, um, where we really need a 3D printing um, or 3D printed metals um, to replace the missing bone, um, then we can base that on the other side that's non-arthritic or has more normal anatomy and fabricate the uh, 3D printed uh, metals, like let's say a talus, 3D printed talus, based on the other side to mimic the anatomy. Um, and that's very helpful for the planning and to do that step. Um, number three, which I find very helpful, is that we have a lot of patients that drive so far to get oh, here yeah. and be seen in clinic. If I have to get the CT scan on another appointment, which we typically do with regular CTs, um, that will mean another trip for the patient. With weight bearing we, that we have in the clinic, um, we frequently try to get it approved the same day, so we get the CT scan done with the same visit, um, and that saves a trip for the patient. Oh, yeah, um, that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you could, you know, take an image of both ankles at the same time, and that made me just think, can you have, if you need them, two ankle replacements done at the same time, or is this a one-at-a-time thing? <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> I won't say that's unheard of. Um, and um, even during my fellowship, we did bilateral ankle replacements. Really? Wow. Um, that's not something I typically recommend uh, mm -hmm. just for the rehab. Yeah. Uh, because we can talk about the post-operative uh, protocol and how we go through that. So the first three weeks, I kind of keep the patient non-weight bearing. So if they're not putting weight on either of their ankles, oh, yeah. that's not fun. No, so, no, yeah, no. I would recommend one at a time if they have arthritis in both um, ankles. Okay, so let's talk a little more about the recovery. How long is the recovery and, and what does recovery look like from this mm -hmm. procedure? Yeah, so um, typically the patient would spend the night in the hospital, um, leave the same day in the morning after they worked with our physical therapist and learn how to do non-weight bearing gait. Um, they will be admitted typically to our orthopedic floor um, at Rubin Memorial. And um, the nursing team, they're orthopedic nurses, they're amazing, take care of the patient overnight. And then uh, once they um, succeed with the physical therapy in the morning, they're good to go home. Um, they will be non-weight bearing for three weeks, and that's to allow that incision in the front of the ankle to heal well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See them back in three weeks, um, take out the stitches, put them in a boot, and allow them to walk on the um, ankle. At six weeks, they transition out of the boot, and they go to the regular shoes. Okay. When does physical therapy start in that process? Right. So around the six weeks, if, if need be, if patient is struggling with their gait, with their range of motion, then we would um, get them into physical therapy um, to work on that. So you may not need physical therapy. You may not need physical therapy. That's oh, correct. Wow. Okay. Wow. So um, this is not a same day surgery procedure, you just told us. Um, what is the success rate then for the surgery? Right. So, um, um, the, since we're, we're using the latest generation of anchor replacement, that mm -hmm. success um, has significantly improved with the newer designs. Um, and midterm, uh, short term, we know those uh, surgeries are uh, successful. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is an artificial joint. So, it's like knees, hips, shoulders. We always have to keep an eye on it. Like we have to see the patient every year, take x-rays, make sure they're doing well. Um, and nothing is kind of collapsing or failing um, because it's an artificial joint. Uh, but so far, the five years um, outcomes, three to five years outcomes are pretty good, above 90% survivorship. So that's a very successful uh, surgery that preserves motion and takes care of the pain. So overall, for the typical patient, what are the risks and the benefits of mm -hmm. this procedure? So it's a surgical intervention. So all the typical risks with surgeries are there. Now, we do give the patient antibiotics immediately before we make the incision to minimize the risk of infection. Um, we do place the patient in the splint or for three weeks to allow good wound healing. Um, specific risks for the ankle replacement would be stiffness, um, would be swelling, um, um, and um, delayed healing of the wound, um, possibly. Uh, blood clots. Um, we do put our patients on blood thinners, mostly aspirin, sometimes more if they have any specific risk factors mm -hmm. to avoid that. 
is this general anesthesia usually or a block or mm -hmm. depend on the patient? Yeah, so we do have a great team of regional anesthesia, at WVU Medicine. Um, and then we do give the patient a peripheral block before surgery. Um, this allows us to use less anesthetic during the procedure mm -hmm. and takes care of the pain after the procedure. Uh, but we do that in addition to a general anesthesia um, during the case. Okay. So uh, tell us a little bit about the experience and expertise of the team at the WVU Medicine Orthopedics Foot and Ankle Clinic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, in the Foot and Ankle Clinic, basically, or at WVU uh, Medicine, WVU Orthopedics, we do have all the resources to um, do the ankle replacement. So we got the weight bearing CT scan um, that if need be, we can even do 3D printed options based on the case by case. Um, we can do the ankle replacement. We have um, all the needed equipment and instruments in the operating room to do the procedure. Mm -hmm. And then a patient will be admitted to an orthopedic uh, floor where the orthopedic nurses are very familiar with the procedure to take care of the patient after surgery. Then uh, the patient would work with a physical therapist on the same floor um, to get used on the initial rehab within the first three weeks. Um, so all of that has been uh, very successful. Uh, we've had good results. Uh, patients were happy so far. And um, I think we have the whole um, team to be able to do an ankle replacement. That's great. So before we go, I always like to ask, what is the most important thing you want um, our viewers and listeners to know about total ankle replacement surgery? Right. Um, so it's the most important thing, I believe, is to raise awareness. And that's what we're doing today um, about the ankle replacement option. So ankle arthritis is, is common. Um, it's common in, in younger patients as well. Uh, because most of the time is post-traumatic, means after a fracture uh -huh. or an ankle sprain, instability, which is the opposite of knees and hips, where arthritis comes from degeneration and wear and tear with age. Uh -huh. This is not the situation in the ankle. Um, so it's important to know that if a patient, if you're a patient with end-stage ankle arthritis, bone-on-bone -bone ankle arthritis, mm -hmm. with or without deformity, um, ankle replacement is an option if conservative treatment has failed. And that option can be done at WVU Medicine. Like we have all the resources here um, to get that done so patients don't really have to travel out of state um, to get such surgery uh, done. I always say it's right here in our front yard, not our backyard, right? right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing all this information on something like most of us, I think, didn't know it existed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you for sharing all this information with us today. Thanks for having me. That was very helpful. Okay, great. So that brings us to the end of the very first edition of Live Healthy West Virginia. I think it went pretty well. Um, if you're looking for more information about joint replacement, visit wvumedicine.org slash joint. And moving forward to find the very latest episode of Live Healthy West Virginia, visit wvmetronews.com slash podcast. I'm Mary Ravazio Menard, and on behalf of Dr. Mahdi and everyone at WVU Medicine, thanks for joining us.